My name is Dan Ansadegi. I am from Boise, Idaho, and I am an NEA National Heritage Fellow. My dad played uh, the accordion for us, always at holidays, and uh, and then then uh, Jimmy's band, Jim Desera Orchestra, uh, they practiced at our, or rehearsed at our house, and that was in the room directly below my bedroom. And so you know, at nine o'clock or eight thirty or whatever time, I had to go to bed, but. I would hear them, they'd play for another hour or so, and they'd work on new tunes. Or, um, so, so I always had that. And then the dancing came, um, you know, shortly thereafter, and, and uh, danced with the young group who really didn't have a name at that time. They were just the young, fast dancers. And then I started with Oinkati's at 14. With my trip, my sophomore year of college, that's when I began playing music because I was able to go to the town of Oñate in the Basque Country. I would consider myself an American Basque. I've done all I can do to go back and try to understand where my grandparents came from and what, what made them the people that they were and how that has affected, affected me. Yeah, we're very happy uh, and proud of Dan Ansadegui and what he represents to the, the Basque community. He's the one that learned from those who brought the songs and the dances and the food directly from the Basque country. He perpetuates the traditions, he keeps them alive and moving forward. Predominantly, the Basques in, in Idaho came from a very small region within the entire Basque country. In the very early 1900s, it was, was very poor. The oldest son or daughter got the farm, and everyone else had to kind of make two. My dad's dad became a, a merchant marine at a young age, 16, 17 years old. On his second trip over, he jumped ship, uh, got together with a Basque gentleman in New York who was who kind of placed Basque people on ranches. Grandma Epi came over and she was used to cooking bacalao vizcaina and she had chorichero peppers, which were kind of a, a, a mild um, chili pepper. But when Grandma Epi came here, uh, they didn't have chorichero peppers. When she came here, they didn't have the salt cod that they used for the bacalao and the things that they did. Uh, they didn't have fresh fish and they had lamb. And she's now, instead of cooking for a, their little you know, family at home, um, she comes over here and she's the head cook for, for 30 hungry Basque shepherds and, and the whole ranch. Everybody works on the ranch. She says, what am I gonna do? So Basque cooking evolved incredibly in the United States and you see that in the Basque boarding houses. So you have the style of Basque cooking in a boarding house that doesn't resemble anything you would see when you went back home. And it's because they had to adapt. They had to adapt to what they had. Uh, I think that's kind of what Basques have been really good at, is, is keeping their culture and yet allowing it to change. I would imagine I was probably four years old there. Uh, and this is my father uh, playing tambourine and Jimmy Gisero playing accordion, who was also a National Heritage Fellow in 1985. When Jim first put the band together in, in 58, because they had a lot of non-Basque people coming to these things, Jimmy started playing uh, old two-steps and waltzes and polkas and different kinds of things that he would mix. Whether it's Basque rock and roll or it's a traditional dance, we always start with the original and, we, and then we go from there. What do you hear? What do you guys hear? And, and what, what do you want to do in this to make it our own? If we were just trying to imitate, it wouldn't work. And it would get a little bit worse every year. With our low button accordion group, we're establishing the pace. This is what it is, this is Basque music. And I have a few original tunes that I stick in there and I, you know, and we learn those and they like those. But for the most part, we're establishing a pace. Then as long as you keep a foot in that, then where you go has those roots, and then you can still be original within that, and that's what then helps it to kind of live on, I think. For me, receiving the Heritage Fellowship from the National Endowment for the Arts means 
It's a show of appreciation for everything that everybody has done around here. I didn't do any music on my own. I didn't do any, I didn't open a restaurant by myself, but I've been able to be there. And to me, that's the biggest thing. We've got to live it. We've got to, if, if we are, uh, if we're just imitating, it's going to die. If we're living it and having fun and teaching others about it, it'll, it'll go on. I said I